Have you ever seen a product online and you just thought to yourself, I have got to try that? Such was the case with this impulse purchase that I made a couple weeks ago. It's called the Globe Trotter Watercolor Wristband. And I love this concept. For those of you who paint outside or you like to paint when you're traveling and just take your supplies with you, having something that is small and compact, lightweight, and easy to set up is essential when you want to paint on the go. So is this product the solution? Let's check it out. All right, I purchased this on sale. I got it from Jerry's Artorama for $17.99, although it's also sold on Amazon. And currently on Amazon, it's a little more. I think it's $22, but that's about the price point of this set for the 12 watercolor pan set. They also sell a set of 24 colors. If you don't want to do a whole lot of mixing and you want the convenience of just grabbing for the paint you need. Gosh, don't you love reviews? Reviews are the best invention ever. It's so great to read through all the reviews and see what people liked, what they didn't like about it. There's a three-star review on Amazon that says throw out the paints put your own in if you really want to use light fast paints that are high quality you can always replace the colors unfortunately with these sets there is no pigment information included so we have no idea if these are light fast or not you'd have to actually do a test in a window light or something like that to see if they're actually light fast I don't want to do that so I'm just gonna try them out today and see how they work for me and if I really dislike the colors I can always replace them with different colors but let's take a look at this you can see it comes really nicely packaged in this blaze orange box it's a really heavy duty cardboard box and you can see it has a picture of the paint set with the water brush that's included it also says there are six refill color pans so you could also replace those with colors you prefer so I'm excited about that the 12 colors are white lemon yellow cadmium yellow hue scarlet cadmium red hue cerulean blue hue ultramarine blue yellow green viridian black burnt sienna and yellow ochre so great selection of colors you have two sets of primaries, warm and cool, which I think is essential in a set of 12. And you've got your classic mixers like burnt sienna and black and yellow ochre and a mixing white if you want to make some pastel colors, maybe for flowers or something like that. So let's slide off this band and open it up. I haven't opened this yet, so I'm excited to see what it looks like. Ooh, wow, that is nice. Look at that. This would make a great gift. A plus for packaging. You've got the band for the wristwatch right here. And everything is so nicely encased in this velvet interior. Whoa. So this kit is marketed as an all-in-one set. It's something that you can take with you on the go and you don't have to have anything else except for the paper, of course. What makes that possible is this little tool. This is called a water brush. And a water brush is a fabulous on-the-go painting tool. It's a brush that's made of a plastic canister which you fill with water. And the synthetic bristles will always remain wet because of the water that's inside and it's self-cleaning. So you do need a rag or something like that when you're rinsing or washing it and changing colors but the water inside of it is sufficient for both cleaning it and dispersing water onto your paper. So it's such a handy tool. This one is pretty thick. I'm not sure how effective this would be for painting really tiny. We'll have to see. You do have to adjust your painting style when you're using a water brush. If you're not used to it, it takes a little bit of practice. But there's the water brush. Here's the wristband. It looks like it will take some assembly. Um, putting things together is not my strong suit. We'll see how this goes. But check it out. Here is the adorable little face of the watch. Look how tiny that is. It's just this little palette, which when you open it up, you can see the 12 colors. I don't know what a 24 size would look like. I'm putting that on my wrist and that looks pretty hefty the way it is. 24 colors might be too much, but look, there's just enough mixing space right there on the one side. And I love this extra touch of having the sponges right here to soak up your excess water. Inside, we also have these individual little pans extra colors. I'm guessing these are colors they assume you're going to use up first, so six extra colors. I was hoping those would actually be empty so I could fill them with my own, but that's all right. We're going to try out the paints as is and see how they do on paper. But first we need to figure out how to put this thing together. I also want to test how easily do these come out and if I tip it over, yep, <laughs> they come out pretty easily. But you know that's nothing that double stick tape can't fix. Looking more closely at this, something I really like about the design is that the little pans have these circular half moon shapes that you can get your fingernail under and easily pop out the pans. If you do want to replace them with different colors or just mix up the arrangement, whatever you want. So they're really, really easy to remove. And also most of them are very stable in there. It looks like they're 
stuck pretty good. I am going to take a piece of tape under this. I'm assuming that's burnt sienna. There we go. So even with shaking it, they're not coming out. So pretty stable. I like that. All right, let's see how the wristband attaches. Okay, I think this is the top. Nice, so it just snaps right in. I hope I got the right side on. I don't know. So you can see there are these little grooves on the side of the palette where the wristband attaches. A Little bit of pressure pops in like that. There we go. So there it is all assembled. And one reviewer mentioned that she had skinny wrists, so it didn't sit very easily on her hand. Let's try attaching it. Just assuming that my wrist is a normal size. I don't know. This is going to be the tricky part, trying to get this put together. So if I hold on to it with my fingers like that, and let's think about this. Now when I'm painting, I'm going to want to hold my watercolor journal in this hand face up. So I'm going to twist this around actually. I'm going to twist it to the bottom of my wrist like this. This goes through the hole. This goes through the loop. All right. So we should be ready to go. Totally feels like I could hike with that. Yeah. It is a little bit loose though. Let's try this one hack that one reviewer suggested. Oh no. Okay, so a couple more of my pans fell out when I took that off. If you foresee this being an issue, it might be a good idea to tape all of them before going on any excursions with this. All right, so one reviewer suggested taking an old sock and cutting it into a wristband and using that as padding for your globe trotter wristband. Now, most of you, if you, especially if you have kids, have a couple of lonely socks that are missing their match. This is too small for my son anyway, so we're just gonna cut off the foot part and put that on the wrist. Ooh, getting fuzz everywhere. <laughs> Could be a fashion statement too. All right, so maybe I would recommend closing it before you put it on your wrist. And if you want it on the underside of your wrist, start with that. Ooh, I like how this feels so much better, just having padding there. It does feel more stable and more comfortable. So that was a really good suggestion by that reviewer, I think. Yeah, so now we're all set. We can open up the palette and get right to painting. When you're painting like this and having to hold the paper in your left hand, I suggest working with a journal that's small and lightweight. This is my Winsor & Newton 5 by 7 inch spiral bound cotton watercolor paper journal. You can see I've used it for a couple of little paintings here. So let's go ahead and turn to a blank page. In a lot of the photos showing this palette in use, the artists are holding their paper in the same hand that they're using the palette with. So it would look something like this and then you'd have your brush in your painting hand. Now first we need to fill this with water. So let's go do that. All right, so set yourself up somewhere comfortable you could obviously do this sitting or standing. Already I'm so impressed by just how portable and lightweight and how free I feel. I could just get up and walk around and go get a glass of water and talk to my friends and I don't have to pack anything up and put it away before I move around. So the portability of this is already really cool. All right, so let's open this up. So for me, holding this in my hand, I had to kind of turn it so that it's like on the side of my wrist rather than on the underside. It just makes more sense with how I'm holding my paper. So here's what it looks like all set up. I've got my brush, I've got my paper and my paints. And I almost said, where's my water? But <laughs> the water brush contains all the water you need to get started. So now we just need to figure out what to paint. All right, I pulled up a mountain scene on Pixabay, just a free image of this gorgeous snow covered mountain. And I'm gonna hold my journal in a landscape format, so sideways like this. And then I'm gonna grab my water brush and activate the paint. Let's see how it does with the blue. All right, we got a couple of different blues here. So I squeezed out a little bit of water from the canister on my palette first so that I can then swirl it in the paint. This looks like a phthalo blue, a bright sky blue, which I think is a good start for a sky. Now, if you wanna do wet and wet techniques first, you can always squeeze out water from your water brush onto your paper ahead of time. So far, the color looks nice and vibrant. No complaints there. Even if your paint quality isn't the best, that's okay as long as you don't compromise on your paper quality. You'll be a lot more frustrated with how your painting turns out if your paper is kind of crummy but your paints are amazing. It's, it's not the same trade-off. I think it's better to have high quality paper than high quality paints. So now that I've wet the paper, I can drop in this gorgeous bright blue. We're gonna suggest at some of those clouds. And if you pre-wet the paper, they should look so soft and fluffy. 
I'm trying not to rest my elbows on the desk because I want to imitate what it would be like if I was standing while I paint or sitting just in a chair with nothing to rest my arms on. So I'm kind of holding it off the desk so I can experiment with the feel of that a little bit. So far, I really like the paint. It's actually not that bad. I thought it would be terrible, but the blue, which is all I've used so far, is pretty good. Let's go ahead and block in this foreground landscape. We're gonna need some darker colors for the foreground, but let's do some wet and wet first, taking the water that's in this little puddle here in my mixing space and just bringing that into the foreground. To go even faster with wetting, I can just squeeze the canister and you can see drop these big droplets of water onto the paper. Now let's mix up some foreground color. I'm gonna use this yellow ochre for the first time and start to suggest that these mountain prairie grasses in the foreground. We need a little bit of green. Let's take this one here, mix that in with the yellow ochre. Ooh, that's super vibrant. Might need to dull that down with some burnt sienna. So to mute those colors, you can always mix the opposite color. The opposite of green is red. And when you mix some red in with your green, you get brown or a neutral color. So that's a great way to mix up quickly and confidently some more earth tones if you don't have them on your palette. And with a set of 12 like this, we have limited colors to work with. So there will be some mixing involved. Well, there's my little finished study that I did in my Winsor Newton journal with the Globetrotter watercolor wristband set. And you can see the colors are gorgeous. After reading a couple of those reviews, I was a little nervous, but I think they're great. They performed beautifully. The ultramarine blue was just what you would expect. Most likely the same pigment you would find in any other ultramarine. And the phthalo blue is perfect for my skies. The yellow ochres, the reds, the greens, and the blacks all mixed beautifully to produce gorgeous landscape tones. So obviously if you're painting on site, you need something that can capture the colors of what you're creating. And this set definitely can do that. I would really like to see this set have a purple. Probably the 24 color set has a purple included because you do see a lot of purples in nature when you're painting outdoors. But other than that, I'm super happy with this. So if you have a watercolor friend in your life who could use something like this, that would make such a fun gift. This could be the new fashion statement for artists everywhere. Some people have a Rolex. Some people have an Apple watch. I've got a paint watch. I'll leave a link in the description so you guys can check this out. What a fun experiment. Check out this next video where I reviewed the Cotman watercolor set and did a plein air painting with that. Let me know in the comments if you'd like to see this one outdoors once the weather warms up, of course, because it's really cold here right now. But yeah, I think I'm gonna be taking this with me everywhere. I'll see you guys next time.